about my lesson plan, an overview. My lesson starts with a whole class instruction involving phonemic awareness. This initial instruction is a thrice-based lesson. After this initial instruction, students then break into rotation groups and work through a series of predetermined leveled rotation activities, some independently and some with a teacher or teacher aid for support. At the end of the lesson, we come back together and reflect. We also spend some time here reading for enjoyment with modelled reading by the teacher who reads for fun to the class. The New South Wales Board of Studies, Teaching and Education Standards describes students as are individuals who learn at different rates and in different ways. These individual differences may influence how students respond to instruction and how they demonstrate what they know, understand and can do. Differentiation is the process of adjusting programs, strategies and even assessment to cater to these needs. The lessons I have focused on for my assignment are literacy based. I start with a whole group lesson. During the whole group instruction, I focus on phonics. In these lessons, which sequence one another, they involve looking at the grapheme Y and how the phoneme differences can affect words. Students need to be explicitly taught this. This fact is well proven. Motes and Tolman state in their article why phonological awareness is important for reading and spelling that phonological awareness is critical for learning to read any alphabetic writing system. Instruction is differentiated here by the required understandings. All students receive the same instruction but are expected to do different things with it. For example, higher students are required to differentiate vowel and consonant sounds in the words. Lower and beginning students are asked to identify the grapheme in the word we are talking about. Students also differentiate when we look at words that use the grapheme. Lower and beginning students acknowledge where the phoneme is in the word and higher students will look at suffixes and prefixes in the same words. Students use thrash charts for this instruction. Lower and beginning students are using the yellow chart with the phonemes on the chart for the students to refer to. Higher students have the blue chart where we work more with memory and work more directly with the graphemes. These charts give students different levels of multisensory support, where they are visually able to see the 44 phonemes of the spoken English language. After the initial whole group instruction, my students will break into literacy rotations. I have organised my groups into six groups. They complete three rotations a day, so they will complete all six activities over the two days. The groups are organised into skill and ability, not age or year level. Three of the rotations focus on reading activities and the other three activities focus on writing activities. This is how I have differentiated the instruction for the identified students during these rotation activities. The child requiring extension is working in the group he is levelled at for reading. It does not identify the child in the information as being an extension grade 3 child or extension prep for example, so I will place the child in the rotation group based on the reading level. At this level the child will receive continued literacy instruction based on his or her own level. The student with the intellectual impairment will be placed in group 1. This group will also be seated in the front row of the classroom so when whole class instruction is given the teacher can direct the student to the learning. This group will have extensive play-based activities as part of the rotations with plenty of concrete materials. The lessons focus for these students is alphabet work and working on the beginnings of articulation and letter recognition. The cousins in year two have been separated into two different rotation groups. This will enable both the cousins to work independently without putting focus on each other. During general teaching time, the two are also separated and do not sit together. Students are not told what level the groups are, so no competitiveness and boasting from higher students can occur. Student placement in a level group will change as the students' needs change. Each table or rotation area has a basket on the table. 
which has the work in it for the rotation of each group. As students enter the new area, they take the work from the basket and work on it as required. This work is student focused and is within the student zone of proximal development. As suggested by Sol McCloyd in his article Zone of Proximal Development, this is done to keep students working in a zone that does not cause boredom or anxiety and where the students are set to succeed. Independent activities are slightly easier where students can scaffold off each other to achieve outcomes independently and the guided groups are slightly higher in the zone where the teacher is present to help scaffold that learning. Teaching strategies. In my whole group lesson, I use various teaching strategies, including adjusting discussion questions according to the student's readiness or ability level. Cox in the article, Implementing Differentiated Instruction Strategies, says, teachers adjust their questions and level of complexity based on what fits that particular child. I use Bloom's taxonomy to help guide me with my questioning developed queries from the very basic to the more advanced. I find this effective when working in whole group instruction to cater for the students at different places in their learning. For example, lower students will be asked questions such as, how many letters are in this word? A middle range child could be asked, what happens to this word if I take this letter out? And a higher student will be asked, how can I change this word to make this word? This is just one way I can use Blooms to differentiate for all groups and check for understanding while still using the same word. In regard to the rotations part of the lesson, learning centres are stations that contain a variety of materials where students can explore topics or practical, practice their skills on their own. By their very nature, they are flexible and can address many learners' needs. Cox continues, that with a few adjustments, there can be a great way to differentiate instruction. And this is what I've done with my rotations. To cater for the differentiation of each group, I have made sure that each rotation is, a, is appropriate to the level of the student, including individual spelling and sight word bags for students to work with. The baskets per group are numbered, so each group knows which basket is their basket to work from. Inside, depending on the activity, is the resources the student will need to do the activity. Some are simple, like an independent reading. The books in this basket are guided readers that we have read over the last month. They get changed over weekly as we rotate out the guided reader. Other activities are a little more complex, such as rotation three on day two. The student activities are more detailed and just require me to be prepared and have, the in, and have the items set up for the students. They know how to do these activities as we have done them before, but the students need their own sight or spelling words to complete the activity. This is where I have put their individual words into bags for them in the basket so they can access this and complete the task. I expect all students to help pack away. This helps to take ownership of their learning. They are in a position of responsibility to ensure that the rotation they are finishing on is packed away so the resources are ready for the next day. I close the lesson with a reflection. I like students to walk away with something positive. I like to highlight what I saw that was great. I like to recognise student achievements. Then I read a picture book to the class. This is an intimate sharing experience where we read for fun. There is nothing else expected at this time but to just enjoy being read to. It is also a great way to model language to students. Resources. Being an early childhood class, my resources involve a lot of concrete materials. I have also implemented many play-based activities as well. Lenny Barblett writes, Young children's play allows them to explore, identify, negotiate, take risks and create meaning. The intellectual and cognitive benefits of playing have been well documented. My initial part of the lesson involving the whole group instruction is based on Thras, so the Thras resources will be required for this. 
The minimum requirement here is the yellow and blue thrash chart and the whiteboard with red and blue pens. If the magnet tiles are available, they can be used to demonstrate the swapping in and out of letters to demonstrate how words work instead of rubbing the letter out and changing it. Both ways will show the same thing. Tiles just make it multi-sensory and students like using them. The resources in the rotation groups are what you would expect to have in each school. My prac was in a remote school, so I was conscious of not providing activities which require super fast internet speed because it is just not available in some rural communities. I have included activities like listening posts. In the event of not having recordings to listen to, the teacher can pre-record a story for the students to listen to if the need arises. I decided to laminate a lot of the worksheet tasks and let the students use fine whiteboard markers on them to complete the activities. I do this for longevity of the materials and to save on photocopy costs. I do sometimes provide a camera to take photos of the students' work so I can check after how they have been working if I don't get a chance to have a quick walk by during the instruction.